Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Raleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief, where you and I have a date every Monday to Thursday to take a look at those top stories making headlines in Israel. And of course, we are reporting on Israel's war with Hamas. This is ongoing. We are now on day 74. And as always, this and all of our in-depth coverage about the war is brought to you by Lay of the Land. And you can check all of it out on our website at www.layoftheland.online. Let's get into those top stories. And for months, we have been told, telling you about how uh, Hamas uses their civilian infrastructure, including and actually specifically hospitals, as human shields. Well, yesterday, the Shabak, or the Shin Bet, as uh, some of you know them as, released their interrogation video of hospital director for the Kamal Adwan Hospital in the northern Gaza Strip. Ahmed Kahlot, speaking to interrogators, uh, spoke about how he has been a member of Hamas since 2010 and how Hamas use um, hospitals as military headquarters, not just to build tunnels, but uh, a lot more blatant than that. He also spoke about Hamas using um, ambulances painted in specific colors to, to transport uh, kidnapped soldiers uh, and to transport their fighters. And he also said that, you know, it's, it's not just Hamas who are in the tunnels that are present in hospitals, but they actively recruit members of staff, doctors, paramedics, technicians, clerks, nurses to be a part of Hamas. So when we say that Hamas is really and truly embedded in the Gaza Strip, that it's embedded within their civilian population, using their civilian population as human shields and actually recruiting uh, protected um, personnel like doctors and nurses as terror operatives. This is what we are hearing from the horse's mouth. I mean, it, it, it reads like a, a movie, but it's not. It's very, very real. And this is the insidious enemy that Israel is fighting. The leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniyeh, is in Cairo. He is reported to be discussing the possibility of a ceasefire, which would see the release of hostages. Now, an unnamed Hamas official has said that Hamas will not release hostages and then uh, resume a situation where the Gaza Strip is being bombed. However, Israel wants our remaining 129 hostages, including 10 men over the age of 70, back as soon as possible. Time is running out. Last night, Hamas released another propaganda video featuring two men. We don't know if uh, they are still alive or where they are. We just know we want them back immediately. A Israeli official is reported to have told CNN that the two sides are nowhere near any kind of agreement for a ceasefire. Uh, now, many of you might know that there is a lot of internecine fighting between Hamas and Fatah, and uh, there seems to be a lot of toing and froing about who would possibly take over the strip following uh, the end of this war and uh, Hamas insisting that they play a part of it. However, no Fatah official is reported to have reached out to them. It's a very, very complicated situation. NBC News last night reported that hostage Noah Argamani, many of you are familiar with the footage of her being taken and put onto the back of a bike, was not actually taken by Hamas terrorists, but could possibly have been taken by a mob of Palestinian civilians, and nobody knows where she is in the Gaza Strip. This is very, very frightening. Time is running out, not just for, for Noah. We don't know what kind of condition she is in, uh, how she is being held, uh, what the situation is for her. But her mother is uh, battling brain cancer. She is terminal. We don't know how much time she has left. And her dream before she dies is to see her daughter again. And we also can't forget that on the 7th of October, hundreds of Palestinians, ordinary Palestinian citizens, came through the point of infiltration, came into those villages and kibbutzim, looting them, 
hurting people, kidnapping people, and even raping and killing people. So uh, it, it's an important point to keep in mind when we talk about just how the how any kind of trust or any kind of um, solution moving forward to peace seems to be well and truly in tatters at the moment. Yesterday I brought you the story about the two uh, Christians reported to be hiding in a church in the Gaza Strip who were accused by the Patriarchate of being murdered by IDF soldiers. Now the IDF have conducted a preliminary investigation and they released a statement which said that uh, there were Hamas spotters firing RPGs, these are rocket propelled grenades, towards Israeli troops near the vicinity of the church. They fired back at three people they said were Hamas spotters. This was not the mother and the daughter as has been claimed. They will uh, continue to investigate. But what we can uh, conclude from that is that the, the IDF have said they operate with extra care, especially around sensitive religious sites like churches, mosques and synagogues, but also that the people that they fired on were Hamas terrorists and not this mother and her daughter. Many of us have been following the United Nations, especially the Secretary General, with great disdain. Well, our ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, tweeted out early this morning that the, ambas that the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations sat and watched the 47-minute uh, body cam and uh, GoPro footage taken from Hamas uh, body cams, from security footage, from GoPros, from uh, other surveillance cameras of the 7th of October. Dunn said that the UN chief says that this was the worst of humanity, that he had witnessed the worst of humanity. But what the, we all want to know is, will this change his attitude towards Israel and his speeches moving forward? Another person who also happened to view it was the president of MIT. She was uh, interrogated in Congress in a congressional hearing on anti-Semitism at uh, American universities, along with the presidents of Harvard and UPenn. Uh, we haven't heard any reports how she responded or reacted to watching this footage. And finally, some good news, because we so desperately need some good news. The uncle of little Avigail Idan, uh, who was... Uh, Kidnapped. She was three years old when she was kidnapped, orphaned as her parents were murdered in front of her. Her two older siblings managed to hide in a cupboard. She turned four in captivity and was released with the, the tranche of, of hostages that were released from captivity in Gaza. Well, we have an update from her uncle and he says she's doing okay. She's running and playing and laughing and he says and acting generally wild. This is how we like our four-year-olds in Israel, running and laughing and playing and um, unaware of the hardships and the heartbreak of the world around us. We are sure that she understands uh, that her mom and her dad are not coming back. But uh, in the meantime, she is continuing to be a child. And that's, that's all we want for all our children in Israel. We want our children from those southern communities to be able to return there and play in peace without any threat coming from the other side of the border fence. And those are our top stories. Don't forget, as mentioned, you can check out all our content on our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our Facebook page, as always, is at Lottle Site, at L-O-T-L-S-I-T-E. Our YouTube channel is at The Israel Brief. And we're on X. I almost said Twitter there. I catch myself out sometimes. Uh, and you can find us at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Raleen Marks wishing you all a safe and peaceful rest of your day. I know you guys will take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Bye for now.